Five days after suffering a massive stroke at his home in Los Angeles, Beverly Hills 90210 star Luke Perry died yesterday. He was just 52 years old. Perry was surrounded by friends and family, including his two young children. Dr. Tara Narula is here for a medical perspective on strokes. But first, Entertainment Tonight co-host Kevin Frazier looks back at an actor whose name became synonymous with the zip code. If the city of Beverly Hills wasn't already famous around the world. You know, the tragedy of this country is that Cretans like you two end up running it. Luke Perry helped put it on the map by playing bad boy heartthrob Dylan McKay between 1990 and 2000. Condolences from his friends and 90210 co-stars flooded the internet Monday. Ian Ziering tweeted, I will forever bask in the loving memories we've shared over the last 30 years. That is a bad guy. Can we go, please? In the midst of his TV stardom, Perry tried to avoid typecasting, first starring in the big screen version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, then playing a world champion bull rider in the film Eight Seconds. Your mom and I are trying to decide between uh, pizza and Chinese food. He made a successful return to television in early 2017, playing the father of the main character in Riverdale. The show temporarily shut down production on Monday. You guys are going to the dance together? We were talking about it. Real life fatherhood inspired him to change his health regimen after a cancer scare four years ago. I'm a father of two children. I want to be with them as long as I can. I want to have as healthy a life as I can, spend as much time with them. His death cut that time tragically short and came as a shock to anyone who remembers him as the youthful rebel who epitomized the 1990s. Like all television series, 902 will come and it will go. You know, there's going to come a day when they're going to say, that's it, that's your last episode. For CBS This Morning, Kevin Frazier, Los Angeles. Our Dr. Tara Narula is here now to talk about the health uh, behind this. Doctor, 52 years old. Perry was. Is that uncommon? Is that extraordinary? So I think one of the misconceptions is that strokes are a disease of the elderly. But what I want to convey is that this can happen to anyone at any age. And while we know that the risk of stroke does increase if you're over 65, right? Three quarters of strokes happen in populations over 65. The risk doubles every 10 years over the age of 55. There's still a fair percentage of people who have strokes in their younger ages. We also have seen an increase in the incidence of strokes in a younger population. Now, whether that's because we're diagnosing them more often or because there's an increase in risk factors, things like high blood pressure and obesity and diabetes that's driving it, it's really unclear. But the big message to young people is, look, you need to understand that you're at risk, understand what your risk factors are, and importantly, recognize symptoms because time is brain. Every minute that goes by in a large stroke, you lose two million brain cells, and this damage is irreversible. And so, you know, it's very important to act on symptoms, even if you think they go away, even if you think they're not a big deal, you need to get to the hospital, because our treatments require intervention in a short window of time. Symptoms like what? Symptoms yeah. like numbness or tingling in an arm or leg, inability to see well, or confusion, or trouble walking, or difficulty with your speech, or mm -hmm. facial droop, uh, lack of coordination, massive headache. Mm -hmm. Any of those things. And 80% of strokes are preventable. Yes. Stop and smoking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So controlling blood pressure, which is very important, stopping smoking, controlling uh, your weight, diet, Cholesterol. exercise, all of the same things we talk about for heart disease. Thank you. Thank yes, you very Sarah. much, Tara. It was very surprising, though, to get that news yesterday. Mm -hmm. Thank you.